Good day, I'm Andrea Chisholm and this is your GIS News for Tuesday, December 17. The Labor and Social Security Ministry has launched its revamped National Workplace Policy on HIV and AIDS. In February of this year, Parliament approved the White Paper which is intended to inform regulations on HIV. Labor and Social Security Minister Derek Kellyer says the Ministry is currently engaging the services of a draftsman to develop these regulations. The intention is to begin public consultations on these regulations in February of 2014. We have also engaged a consultant to develop a protocol for managing HIV in instances of overseas employment. And we are working at ensuring that our menu of social services are sensitive to the needs of persons with HIV and do not contain any loopholes for HIV-related discrimination. The regulations on HIV will be appended to the Occupational Safety and Health Act. In the meantime, the Labour Ministry has also launched an OSH profile of Jamaica, which documents the country's resources for implementing and managing occupational safety and health. Businesses are to receive greater access to credit following the passage of the Security Interests in Personal Property Bill in the Senate last Thursday. Justice Minister Senator Mark Golding piloted the bill in the Upper House. This really represents a landmark piece of legislation and we anticipate will have a positive impact on our international ranking for doing business. The legislation will, for the first time, allow intangibles, including intellectual and other forms of personal property, to be used as collateral for accessing business financing. In this regard, this is, the bill is designed to support the enabling environment for businesses and is expected to contribute positively to achieving the objectives of economic growth and job creation. Minister Golding says the legislation will speed up economic inclusiveness in the country while effectively minimizing the risk of non-payment of loans. It was previously approved in the lower house on December 3. More than 800 high school students will not have to pay the cost of sitting their CSEC Spanish oral exams next year. The students fall within the Education Ministry's regions 3 and 4, which include the parishes of St. Mary, St. Anne, Trelawney, St. James and Hanover. Last Thursday, President of the Spanish Jamaican Foundation, SJF, Ambassador Celson Nuno, presented the Education Minister with a $764,000 check to cover the cost of the exams. Regions 3 and 4 were chosen because that's where the majority of SJF member companies operate. Education Minister Reverend Ronald Thwaites applauded the SJF support for the teaching of such an important foreign language, saying it will greatly contribute to Jamaica's social enablement and economic advancement. JADCA's recently appointed Executive Director Kerry Brown is in Montreal, Canada, visiting a water accredited laboratory there. Mr. Brown assumed the leadership of JADCO in November. He left the island Sunday for a week-long visit, which is the result of an invitation from representatives of the World Anti-Doping Agency, who visited Jamaica in late October to review the country's anti-doping program. While in Canada, the new executive director will also visit the Canadian Centre for Ethics in Sport to explore the establishment of a cooperative partnership between JADCO and that national anti-doping organization. And finally, wards at the Mount Olivet Boys' Home were fettered with gifts and fine food by the management and staff of the Jamaica Information Service this past weekend. The treat has been an annual event since the agency adopted the home four years ago as part of expanding its corporate social responsibility. Chief Executive Officer of the JIS, Donna Marie Rowe, points out that while the agency is not able to undertake capital-intensive projects, she is pleased with the work that the team has been able to achieve through fundraising events. Our first staff visit was in December 2009 and we have been here three times a year ever since. Easter, back to school and at Christmas. We have hosted career days, work days, sports days. We have planted vegetables in the farm, attended a church service and have held mentorship sessions with the boys. And we have had a wonderful time watching the boys grow. Mrs. Rowe used the opportunity to thank some 30 sponsors who have responded positively over the years to requests for donations to the home. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Thank you for watching.